Hey. Yeah. How's it going? I'm trying to do vocals. How are they going? Bad. <laughs> oh. How, uh... How are you? In terms of... Inches. Six. Is that average? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going below average. How, how far are you? Oh, uh, I did. <laughs> this is reverb on. I did all of the normal section, and I'm trying one version of the end that everyone might hate. Cool. And I'll likely never use. Looking forward to hating it. Basically, it's nothing like the ending. What do you mean? It's nothing like the ending. The ending is all. Na, 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 na. <laughs> and this is like. Ah, ah, ah. Did you did you just like reason to the mic over and over again, and that's the ending? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. There's some harmony. So yeah, gonna hate it. Keep up the work. So you're looking forward to that, Ender? You have no idea. Ah! I might steal this later. Whoa. Ah! Are you okay? <laughs> keep keep it up. Yeah. Put it up. Ah! Welcome, ah! welcome to Overlitch. <laughs> Sometimes succeed, and other times tear each other apart trying to do that. Old Village is a band. Um, kind of seems like maybe an oddity in uh, in the music biz. I mean, just from what I've heard in like watching interviews and from talking to other bands that we've played with, uh, especially as far as like, the bar scene goes in Vancouver that we've played a bunch. We are different. We are brothers, 
essentially. We care about each other first. And then the music. Yeah. I thought you waited for it to start. You start on four? On yeah. the fourth beat of the third Don't part. become a part of If I were to quote myself. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. It's not worth it. In the jam room, I'd say we've really tried to make the dynamic completely like equal in all in all ways. Not necessarily the same, but like everyone has a say, and if they have the point to make whatever it is, they're allowed to make it. I remember when we were working with our first um, real producer that we worked with, uh, Steve Clawson, produced. Far side of the sea, and one thing he said to us after a while working with us uh, in relation to band dynamic was, "You know, you guys are a little weird as a band. You don't have an alpha." And we were all sort of like, "What? Like, what does that mean?" We were pretty young, and we didn't really know exactly what he meant. So he, he clarified and said, "Bands often will have like a band leader, and then sort of the band more follower roles, and then there'll be like one guy who takes." The the bull by the horns and does everything and tells everyone what they're doing and then they'll, they'll have some input to varying degrees but there'll still always be a predominant alpha voice and Steve kind of noted in us that we don't really do that. I generally bring the initial idea, it's often the case, I'll um, sit at the piano and make something up, kind of just like a random motif and then bring it to the guys and we all kind of work together on structuring it. I try and have a big influence on that, considering I tend to get an emotional attachment to the piano and guitar part I write. Um, and then I write here. I don't know what I'm playing. I didn't, because I didn't write the freaking intro. I told you, yeah. it's just a B. Also, he's, yeah. asking, also he's asking Matt and not you. My role is pretty much the same as everyone else's in that it's be creative. Well, I feel like my, my role in the band is in some ways really supplementary. I feel like um, this Dave and Scott and Steve, they, they started in a band together. And when the band O Village was first formed, uh, there were a lot of songs were already kind of written by their the previous incarnation. And so they were kind of the core group, and then I would come in and I would add my own textures and add to the soundscape, just kind of like fill it out and stuff. And I feel like I've kind of kept doing that in a lot of ways. I have different musical tastes, just like we all do, so I'll bring a, a bit of a different view to things than, than other members of the band will. I like to try to mediate. I'm not sure if I'm good at it, but I definitely like to try to mediate uh, whenever there's differences of opinion or something, I'll try to say, okay, where are we at? Like, we're disagreeing here, and I'll try to name, like, what one person is thinking, what the other person is thinking, and then say kind of my view about a possible resolution. However, I'm not actually sure if that helps the other guys or if that's just for my own benefit that that happens. But yeah, I like to play. For me, what I like about it, in comparison, it, like it's got more of the <coughs> swagger. By that, you mean the feel? Yeah. Yeah, more emphasis. <laughs> I like the way it suits the style of that section with the shuffle. The writing process has been laborious, is the first word that comes to mind. We've put in a lot of time and we've it feels like a lot of time that we've put into it, and I, th I think I, along the along the road, I kind of like said to Scott, and he kind of like affirmed the the thought, like I think.
think we're putting more time into this than bands normally put into albums. Um, and he was sort of like, yeah, I think that too. So we would record every jam session and we would go over it and replay everything. And so it was very, very strenuous. I was thinking cool. that oh, when I made that, I'm like, that I should just change everything else. I should just <laughs> have that be just the whole thing be a constant rise. Do 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 seem like a cohesive melody that was like backed up by something supporting it. It just sort of seemed... Yeah. Yes, that's actually okay. what, I, what I was going to say. Like, um, a lot of it sounds kind of nice. There's just like a few, um, a few too many like unisons at some points, but it was just kind of like, it just kind of felt like two parts that just keep going. Um, whereas the, the, the last one, um, maybe because... Um, which one, sorry, which one was that last comment in reference to? The one about yours. yours. Okay. That's what I just said. Yeah. Uh, for the upcoming album, it's been a lot more work intensive. We actually came up with like a plot almost. We came up with a series of points in a story that follows the, the last two albums. Because um, we really, we like the the idea of a full album that you listen from start to beginning and it tells a story or gives you an experience or, you know, that whole concept. And we would kind of pick moods for each spot and be like, what mood goes with this plot point? And we would um, jam something out and use tones and instrumentation that kind of fit that mood. And that was kind of a way that we were able to have cohesiveness throughout the musical concepts that were happening and also just a bit of a constraint that we could place on ourselves that would increase our creativity in certain ways. We had, uh, we had a couple songs that were already written that we wanted to use, but for the most part, last year, we basically said, let's write an album that we want to present from start to end. It's gonna be all new. We weren't just writing songs to make them sound good, we weren't just writing songs for fun anymore, I guess. It was, it was more purposeful. But it's been, from my perspective, super fruitful. I'm not sure which direction to go lyrically exactly. I went an extreme direction. Would it be a good idea if Dave and Matthew started recording those horns and strings and I came in and Maybe give you a sounding board to bounce ideas off of for lyrics and or... That is the weirdest idea I've ever heard. Ever? But possibly... That might not be a horrible idea. Lord, I swear I was here and I love you like I never have a I don't know if you on that. Each of your lines, for the most part, sort of set up each of those rhythm changes. And yeah, I leave that space. Exactly, yeah, which, which I think is appropriate. That's always what I wanted to do.
So if someone asked me, are you a Christian band? My answer is never yes. My answer would always be no. And then I would further elaborate. If someone asked me the question, are you guys a faith-based band? I would be much more um, ready to say yes to that question because faith-based has a lot more latitude, um, whereas Christian band is a, a label that kind of wraps you up in some things that we as a band don't want to be wrapped up in. O Village, faith-based. Band. Yeah, I think so. So the faith aspect of the band has been incredibly interesting because like, it's something I don't always relate to. Personally, I don't see us as a faith-based band. Um, and this album is so much less about that. Um, Especially for me, like in this last year, I've kind of begun to question everything that I believe, um, be it about like religion and faith or anything else, reality. Um, and so writing this album, we had a, this storyboard um, that had a lot to do with faith. And then my thinking shifted a lot. And then trying to make songs and lyrics that fit into that was really, really difficult for me. I think, and again, like I, I think that's changed for each of us personally. It's easy to say that faith for all of us is a basis that we come from. However, it's harder to pin down at any single point with something as unique and personal as faith is exactly where we are at any given point. I feel like a lot of what we do in our own lives is rooted in our faith and that inevitably comes out in our music. I would say it's right in there with the questions that the lyrics are struggling with. Um, so as far as the spiritual influence on the music, um, it is huge. Like this album I will say is probably the most heavily influenced by that and it's what it is about. It's about faith, but I don't think it's like the previous two releases where it's an advertisement for those. Stops when it comes to Abbotsford. One of our only stops. People dislike Abbotsford. It doesn't have the same scene that Vancouver does. It sucked. <laughs> the way the way I feel that uh, the band has been affected by not growing up in a city that has a thriving music community um, is that it, we've been less affected. Because how I see it is if we were in the heart of Vancouver, playing um, bars all the time, and we were very immersed in that music. I feel like we would retain a lot of who we are, but um, it would be more effective because we would be more involved in a, in a music community that has its own sound. A part of it's been really cool. I would say being in Abbotsford is so interesting because you just know everyone in the scene. Um, and if you don't, and want to know about. It's, I think, in general, it's very, it can be good artistically just to be able to develop your sound without any bearing on your fan base, just being able to play some crappy shows 
in the Fraser Valley that nobody knows about and suck. Having that space to suck is very good. But there's a lot of downsides. There's not a lot of venues. We played House of James like six or seven times um, because it's the best place in town. Then again, once you actually want to stop sucking, then it takes a lot to actually break into a large scene. So it's been a bit of a downer because if we were like in Montreal, be in the middle of everything, right? Like, and there's a reason people go there in other places. Um, but it's been not bad. Steve Clawson said to us one time, if you're from Abbotsford and you want to play in Vancouver, don't just say on your online profiles and when you're meeting people, hey, we're from Vancouver. Um, he sort of told us to stay true to ourselves a little bit. Um, but just to say, yeah, we're from Abbotsford. That means we're different. Um, not just so that we can be unique, but more so that, um, I don't know, it's, it's a little bit different than saying you're from Vancouver to say, yeah, we're from Abbotsford. I think there are some really talented artists that just aren't able to do what they should be able to do because there's nothing for them to do it. I feel like we do have a responsibility to support the music scene in our own hometown. I feel like it's important to go to shows and, and pay to see other bands. I feel like we would be maybe hypocritical for not doing so. Like if we write some songs and they bomb in Vancouver and everybody hates us, we don't really feel like we're done. We're just, we'll just go back to Abbotsford where everyone loves us. We have shirts for sale. We have CDs for sale.
John, were you here when they recorded Taking Care of Business? Oh, yeah, man. That was me. <laughs> he was the band and the producer. <laughs> What's that? I said, what did this used to be? Oh, this was the old Mushroom Studios. Classic, iconic Vancouver studio where such great as Red Zeppelin graced these walls. Recorded the harmonic solo for Bring It On Home. What else happened here? Sam Roberts. Heart. The Supremes. Billy Joel. Shoulders comes on. And now. <laughs> oh, village. Oh, village. I can feel them in the walls. That's right. In me. in my head about our next full-length release before we actually started planning to rely at all. I had this idea of a mountain in my head. It was very vague, but it was really like, I was really adamant about it. Like for some reason, I was like, I want this to be what our album is about. The album is going through an intense hardship and coming out the other side, what, what is there to learn through that hardship? So I think one way that I kind of interpret that is almost a theme of loneliness because it's very much a personal journey. And within that, we, there's a lot of different concepts that get touched on. The concept of, of what home is like, kind of leaving home and what that, means and what home is and how you look back on home when you've left it. And it starts off very eager, very excited to do this, very excited to go on this journey, and it slowly just gets harder and harder and harder. And it's like, you know, heartbreak. I miss where I was before, I don't want to do this. This whole process of going through this breaking down isn't worth it. 
Um, there's dialogue, there's like conversation. The album isn't about like the joy of overcoming adversity. It's not about great triumph over your troubles or anything like that. It's more about the journey and how excruciatingly difficult that is. Questions of, of faith, worldview sort of stuff get intermingled in there and that's a place where I can clearly point to our faith context playing into the, the lyrics of this album. So the album is very spiritual, um, very much revolving around God or the idea of God and how that plays into our existence. But I don't think it, the album itself is very religious. At times there's a song or two or three which are just like straight up anti-religious just because that's the mindset I really wanted to be conveyed. I wanted the person to really feel hatred for it just because that's an, ex that's an emotion people feel and it should be expressed in one way or another. So it's a lot more raw and diverse, I'd say, when it comes to how it's looking at spirituality. I think in some ways he finds Christ, but that doesn't mean much. And I don't think in the context of this story, like the idea was that this faith journey, while it's like a picture of a mountain and like trying to get somewhere, I think the point, at least one emphasized by me, is like that's not it. Like there's, it doesn't end there. There is no finish. There is no final step. As much as you like to think there is. It's not done, even when you think you understand, even when you're aware of like something bigger than yourself, there's still way more questions to be asked. Probably girls or something. That's what Scott writes about, right? <laughs> Is it recording? Mmm. kind of comes to a point where this uh, this story about a mountain is isn't um, like so much physical as it is metaphorical for the journey uh, that the story is going through and it it's about overcoming like the hardest thing that you've ever done because there are things in life that you know that are coming the death of your parents and or loved ones, or financial stress, death and taxes are a guarantee, right? Like the hardship that we're going through in this album is, is one that you sort of see coming. Like in the beginning, you're sort of preparing for it. And of course, it, you can never prepare enough for what that hardship is. Is there a God that loves me? Should I love and be a part of his um, will or plan? Is that something I want? How does that affect me and how does that make me want to treat other people? Um, the questions about God, about life, about how one relates to what they've been told about God about how one compares that to what they see in the world and how they make those pictures fit and where those pictures do fit together and where those pictures clash and how to deal with those sort of um, differences in what you've been told um, and what you see. And that's some pretty adult stuff. Um, I think it's super cool. It's, it's some fun things to deal with. Um, and it's some very necessary things to deal with, I would say, that everyone has to address at some point.
very much it's an album about growing up and learning to ask some hard questions. And it's not necessarily about getting the answers to those questions. In fact, I would say it is not about getting the answers to those questions because it doesn't have a firm, like, ending where everything is wrapped up and, and consolidated. And I think in that sense, people will be able to relate to it because that's human experience. We don't get clean answers for our questions. does get rid of the surprise, but I don't dislike it. <laughs> it's like, oh, I know what they're gonna do. <laughs> you need to feed back right before. <laughs> 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 you know what I will. I don't need energy. Maybe it's just that... <laughs> I often, I often hit that a bit harder. Because I, 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 I hit that a bit harder. Okay, cool then, you're probably fine. It doesn't really matter how much in time it is, and I like that performance of it, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Why does it matter how much in time it is? Well, not like, like as in like, like, I see. like, like, like nice. comping it and making sure all those tom hits are like in time, doesn't matter. But yeah, like obviously the hits, yeah, like it, it's in time enough.
place since recording our first album, that's for sure. We've all grown up as individuals. That's the first thing that comes to mind. For me, I went from 19 years old to 22. That's a big three years in most anyone's life. We've definitely progressed in the way we do things, and I think we've progressed a lot in the product that we turn out, if you will. We have come a long way. I mean, we're all in years of our lives that are changing and growing, and some of us have gone through some pretty drastic life changes in, in their personal lives, for sure. And we are all different people, maybe more so than we are a different band. And then uh, To Rely was really the beginning of us starting to discover our sound and like just be able to play something and have it sound like us in a sort of unique way. Um, and I think this is us being comfortable in that and then within that being able to just explore and do whatever the hell we want. I think we're way better both in songs and in albums and just like as a band dynamic with each other. Even though we've all gone through a lot of personal changes as a band, we still kind of hold on to what we were at the very start. I feel like we've kind of stayed true to how we formed the band. We've just gotten better at playing music. I, I personally just want to be able to make the best album that we possibly can. I'm really excited that our new songs are more fulfilling. Um, they go to a lot of new depths. Um, because we've been writing it as one very cohesive album, the journey of it is really intense. I'm just really looking forward to having it made. And I just wanted to blow all of our other music up the water. No offense to our other music over there, but they suck now because this is going to be so good. I think it would be sweet if someone listened to this and thought, this is great music and I love it. And it communicates something to me that I haven't had communicated in quite this way before. Um, that's the reaction I want to our album because that's the reaction that I have to music that I love. Like, for the people who are really excited about, like, Jesus and God and faith, that they will be able to be like, yeah, like, the thoughts behind what I believe are, like, quite represented in this. And I took something out of it that made me understand the other side more, that made me understand 
understand why people may not believe in this, um, and vice versa, that people who are like, oh, Christianity, Jesus, that's all stupid, would be able to be like, yeah, like, why I don't believe is expressed decently in ways in this, and I can now understand in some ways why some people would believe in that. I think the point for me is just to sort of do it. I really enjoy doing it. I find it enriches my life. And I mean, I think it'll enrich other people's lives as well. Like it's, you know, if I knew that not one other person was going to listen to it or derive any enjoyment or entertainment from it, I would probably still do it. So when I listen to an album and I think there's something about this album that makes it stand out for me and it's phenomenal and I keep coming back to it and learning more from it um, and digging into it. Like I don't even exactly know what I mean when I say those sort of things about an album I like, but that's what I want people to have with our album. I want them to, to like it and to listen to it and to honestly tell their friends, I found this great album and I don't care about remuneration personally. I would be totally fine giving it to free, for free to everyone. I would say O Village's end is very open-ended. I feel like when we started making music together, um, it was pretty much just for the joy of making music. I don't think any of us has a place where we feel like we need to get to. Some of us know for sure that music is what they want to do with their life. To fulfill my love of music, I don't necessarily need to be a performing musician. We are just enjoying the journey with each other as far as it goes. But as far as what we'll do next, it's sort of unclear. We've decided to not pursue commercial success as O Village. That's a decision we came to collectively. But we all kind of agreed like, yeah, there is still more we want to do. So the fact that we've agreed to that is kind of cool because we all know there is something more that we want to do with this music and we're not just ready to um, dig a grave and dump everything into it and roll the earth back over it and let it decompose slowly. We still want something to happen with this. I'm sure that between the four of us there will be music that gets made that we're a part of, but as far as the format of that music and where it will get made and how it will be released, I have no idea. There's a lot of questions about the future. I have no idea half the time. And so taking some time to better understand ourselves and what we actually really want out of life and what we're going to pursue, I think is big. I don't think that will mean O Village is done. I think that'll just mean O Village will continue when it can. 
I'd say it looks like we have been able to keep the ball rolling forward and, and keep, um, keep creating music together. And that's pretty cool. I feel really lucky that that's been the case. The end. Je t'ai l'enfant, je suis heureux, quand les 